Yes, Chuck. I was super late getting on the Kirby bandwagon. I always kind of ignored the franchise until it was time to crank through the Game Boy, NES, and SNES games for this channel all the way back in August of 2015, and I was stunned by how much I liked Kirby Superstar and Kirby's Adventure in particular. They are great freaking playthroughs. So I'm happy to say if you're a fan of those games, or the Game Boy games for that matter, then you'll love Kirby and the Amazing Mirror for Game Boy Advance. The story here is that Mirror World, which exists high above Dreamland, is in trouble because of a mysterious dark force, and meanwhile Kirby's just hanging out doing Kirby things, until he's ambushed by Meta Knight. Or is it? He somehow splits Kirby into four different Kirbys, each a different color. The real Meta Knight tries to stop this dark Meta Knight, but he's defeated and gets thrown into a mirror which is shattered into eight pieces, and yep, you guessed it, Kirby's gotta get the mirror fragments back and enter the mirror world and save the day. After all that's been introduced, you can, uh, well, you can do pretty much whatever you want, because this is open world Kirby. Okay, it's pretty linear at the beginning, but after that, you can play through this game in just about any order you feel like, since many levels have multiple entrances and exits. So yeah, this is one of those games structured to appeal to all sorts of different players. If you're a completist that likes to 100% everything, there's plenty here to dive into. If you're a speedrunner, there's a couple paths you can discover that allow you to finish the game in something like 45 minutes, although I think the world record is around 28 minutes these days. For example, you can easily skip from the middle of World 4 all the way to World 7. But look at these maps though, there is a lot of content here, probably around 4 or 5 hours worth, so if you want to really dig into this one, there's a lot of substance here. There's mini games, mini bosses, big bosses, tons of treasures to unlock, and hey, if you don't care about any of that stuff, just skip it. The gameplay overall is like you'd expect from a Kirby game. In fact, it uses the same engine as Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, a Game Boy Advance remake of the NES game Kirby's Adventure. But if you've played Kirby Superstar, it's pretty similar to that too. I also want to note quickly that this one was not developed by the usual Kirby dev team at HAL Labs, but mostly by a Capcom subsidiary, Flagship, who also had a hand in everything from the Onimusha series, the Resident Evil series, and the Zelda Game Boy Color games, as well as the Minish Cap. But make no mistake, this definitely has that definitive Kirby look, sound, and feel to it. There's some new stuff here and there though, like Mini Kirby, who uh, makes you really small, and Missile Kirby, who just destroys everything it touches, as if Kirby's not powerful enough already. There's also a Smash ability you can find which gives Kirby his Super Smash Bros. moveset. Now that is cool. What's weird here is the multiplayer aspect. You have three other Kirbys hanging out in the same level as you, all in different colors, and they're computer AI controlled, but they are capable of being controlled by a second, third, and even a fourth player. So if you actually know someone in 2019 that wants to play this via link cable, then there you go. If you're playing by yourself though, these guys are just kinda there, I guess. They do help solve a puzzle here and there, and you can summon them by pressing the R button up to three times as indicated by the battery meter up top. But to be honest, they just kinda get in the way most of the time. Still, kind of a cool idea, and definitely a neat way to do multiplayer at the time. What's really cool here is that if you've played Superstar a lot like I have, you'll recognize a lot of Kirby's abilities from that game, and you'll notice that they've gotten a bit of an upgrade. Nothing major, just smarter and more player-friendly adjustments that help wipe out enemies. Which brings me to the difficulty. I know nobody's really playing Kirby for any kind of Dark Souls-like challenge, but still, this game is pretty dang easy. That's definitely not a bad thing though, I just thought I'd point that out. So yeah, there is a lot of substance to Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. It's like if a Kirby game ate Super Metroid and absorbed its gameplay structure. There's hours of exploration available to you, or you can just sprint through. This is a very speedrun friendly game. There's also three mini games which are accessible through the main menu. They're all very similar to past mini games, but still, it's nice that they're there. But yeah, this is definitely one of the 10 best, or maybe even one of the 5 best Game Boy Advance games ever. It may not represent much of a challenge, but still, it's such a fun playthrough, and it's well worth checking out today. And I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.